What's going on, everybody? It's your boy here to give you guys a view for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. As y'all can see, I know it's been a while, but I'm rocking my Come On Bitch shirt. Uh, Shout-outs to uh, Erica De Niro, Kelly, and Nate. Um, so, pretty much starts off with Cynthia. So, I did not know that she was 49. So, apparently, she'll be 50 this year. Like I said, she, fuck, she looks stunning. Um, she admits to having a boob job. Here's the, I don't. I didn't know that, so I'm like, all right, cool. Um, and she's, I get, I think it's been two years, so I guess right now, I don't know if she's truly getting another implant. No, I think she's getting more implants, but I know that she's doing more of like a maintenance type thing. Um, so she has Kenya and Candy there. The other girls are on their way, and she even kind of, you know, just threw it out there where, you know, hey, this might inspire some of the other girls. They feel they want a, a boob job to get a boob job. And, um, uh, Candy's just like, everybody coming to include Phaedra, so she mentioned what happened the previous day. Now, I know a lot of people were up in arms about, um, Candy spilling all the beans, because, yes, I will admit, you know, if you friends with somebody, unless they sit here and they come for you, you know what I'm saying, uh, or unless they try to spray you, you shouldn't, um, you know, tell what was told to you in private and secret, but I will say, even though it's not to her defense, Candy did pretty much say, like, I'm going to just leave this alone because I don't want to say some shit or something along those lines. And then Phaser came back trying to sit here and play around with it, and that's when Candy kind of popped it off. So I think had Phaser just, like, let the shit go, we wouldn't have got what we got last week. So Sheree, Portia come in, and then Phaser comes in. You know, she does the whole, you know, being cordial thing. You know, like I said, everybody's adults and whatnot. So that's one of those where had Candy not told uh, Kenya and Cynthia, you, it was one of those where it wouldn't have been known. Yeah, you, we can't sit here and think that Phaedra's not going to tell Portia at a minimum and definitely, you know, go not tell Sheree. So we'll see how all that plays out. And, I mean, that's pretty much it for right now. So, um, <clears throat> we got Sheree, she's in her, uh, chateau, she mentions how she, I believe, is already over budget, that should be telling you something, her, uh, interior, uh, designer, her decorator, he is high price showing her all, all this high-end shit, talking about how she doesn't want to have shit from Ikea, so again, you know, try to keep up with the Joneses, keep up appearances, <laughs> excuse me, and all this other stupid ridiculous crazy shit that she's trying to do and all for what you know what i'm saying so you're doing all this so you're further putting yourself in debt and i guess she's banking on the fact that she's gonna be back for the real housewives next season if there is a next season this shit is i about to say i guess we starting to get the drama now and we're starting to get the good shit but up until this point yeah so um she mentions how she wants to have everything done in five weeks and she wants to have the party in two months. So that's her timeline. So Candy goes uh, to pick up earrings because um, Riley is turning 14. Just leave that there. But she's turning 14. So she's um, buying earrings as a gift. Uh, Mama Joyce comes in. And, you know, Joyce and her pretty much just talk about how, you know, this is what happened between me and Phaedra. You know, again, rehashing everything that already happened. She said everything that she wanted to say. And then also went on to mention how, um, come on, yeah, come on now, how Block, uh, how she's going to make it to where Block and Riley can have that um, relationship, but she wants it to be where it's just them. And they even, you know, show past clips of uh, Riley saying he's just the birth giver. That sounds a hell of a lot better than a sperm donor, but, you know, her stance on it, but Candy's whole thing is I don't want to be involved, and I want them to have a relationship absent of me, so we'll see how all that plays out. Okay, so things are getting juicy, so, um, but I think we're gonna be, I'm gonna try to, like, not spend too much time on uh, Noel and Peter, because I was actually going to, but the scene that I just saw kind of gave me a little bit more, but I can always pause the shit, but... Uh, Noelle hits up Peter, they go do yoga because, you know, like I say he was a second father to her and had been, you know, in her life for quite some time, so she misses him, and, you know, she just says that she's hurt at the distance that is between her and he due to the fact that, you know, he and her mother 
you know, are not uh, together right now. In addition to that, you know, she feels some kind of way because no one is asking her how she feels about a certain thing and if she misses Peter and this, that, and the third. And when she said that, that immediately took me back to, you know, when I lost uh, my mother's parents because we lost both of them within a month. <laughs> and it was during the worst time. We lost um, uh, my grandfather like several days before Thanksgiving. And then we lost my grandmother several days after Christmas. So pretty much within a month of each other, we lose the pillars of our fucking family. And like those were two hard blows to the family. And with everything that was going on, like I said, I, they never asked if any of the children, because I had just turned 10 and my my first cousin, uh, Debo, he 10. So they never once asked us, you know, how we feel, if we're okay, especially because we were up under them an awful fucking lot. And that shit hurt was just like, okay, so y'all are so concerned about y'all feelings, but y'all don't give a fuck about ours. So when she said that, I was just like, man, like that took me back to a place. I'm just like, see, I don't need to be having these thoughts this early on, <laughs> okay? And if I didn't already say, so happy new year, y'all, I probably should have said that happy new year, but I shouldn't be thinking about the shit this early into the new year. So they promised that they, you know, go do better with keeping their relationship, you know, together. So Horsha and Shamia, they go do this thing with the Yanni egg. So you pretty much insert this egg in your badge and it's supposed to tighten things up. I guess it creates some lubrication on the inside. And the part that fucking got me is you pretty much supposed to lay a fucking egg. So pretty much you're supposed to pop the egg out. I'm just like, you know what? That's too damn much. Sheree comes in. And, and if I didn't know if it's supposed to help keep the shit nice, right, and tight, all that stuff. Uh, and I think also help with, you know, the whole fertilization, all the shit. I don't fucking know. We don't care. Sheree comes in to tell in, and then she goes on to, you know, tell them about the conversation that she had with Candy. So I'm a little upset because it goes from Candy going that fake. I mean, here's the you call whomever. And of course, we know that a lot of this is mostly for the sheer fact of we need to get shit going for the season. Because the reality is, once she had that combo with, um, you know, uh, Phaedra, the only other people that would have been, you know, talked to about it would have been her husband, her team, and her mom. All the other people, you know, it's one of those where, let me hit pause right quick. It's, it's, it's a tad bit too much. You can tell it's a lot of put on right now. Because, of course, like I said, of course, we need people to carry the ball so we can sit here and develop more of the drama. Because when she sat down with um, Cynthia and uh, Kenya, she could have been like, Oh, I didn't know she was going to be here. She and I, we had a fall now yesterday. I really want to talk about specifics, you know, just us kind of going at it da, 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 and left it at that. You don't always have to go into, de you know, details. So we know some of this is put on for the cameras. I just hope they read it for it because, I, like I said, we all know um, Candy's quite get to. All right. And then Shamia, and the comment that was said by Shamia was how... Phaedra was dating somebody. I think I, I think it was like you know dating somebody before Apollo went in, trying to marry somebody. You know before the before like before the year was up, all that other shit, and that put uh, Portia in her feelings. That just like, and she did make a good point. When you have random people talking shit about you, that's one thing. But when you have a friend or so called friend, ex friend, speak the same shit, it's almost like okay, they're validating what everybody has been saying. So the fact that it's coming from a friend best friend, you know, it seems like it's more truth to it. And Shamia even went so far as saying, well, she can't put shit past Phaedra because when she was married, Phaedra tried to holler, not even, yeah, was trying to holler at her husband. He went so far as saying, I don't know why you wiped her up this, that, and the third. So I'm just like, ooh, well, all the shit getting spilled right now. <sighs> so it's Riley's B-Day. You have uh, Kayla there, who is uh, Todd's daughter. Todd, Joyce, and Candy. Riley mentions that her father called her, wanting to meet up with her, and she wants her mom there. Candy's just like, I want y'all to actually be able to sit down by y'all self. And Kayla mentions, you know, because of a similar thing between her and Todd, she was like, the first time meeting up with my father, you know, yeah, it was kind of weird. I didn't know the guy. 
And, you know, it kind of gets easier after that. So she was like, I feel that, you know, Candy should be there, <clears throat> you know, the first time at a minimal. But they pretty much agree, okay, well, we're going to let our Riley make the decision for herself. So now we got Phaedra, Horsha, and Sheree sitting down talking. They rehashing all the past shit, more or less, that, you know, uh, the Yanni class and everything that came out in that. And, you know, uh, Horsh is mostly just mad that, you know, that conversation should have stayed right where the fuck it was, which, yes, it should have. But let's also be clear, there are cameras there. So even had it not, we would have been addressing this shit at the reunion either fucking way. I mean, so let's keep it all the way to fucking 1,000. And in addition to that, you also have, let me see. So then, of course, Miss Bo- Miss Carrie Bone, she was like, well, you didn't tell everything. What about your friend Shamia? So then it, so then the whole Shamia thing got brought up. So, of course, uh, Faith was like, well, you know Candy is close to both of them, you know. Like I said, she and pretty much said that she fucked um, Shamia and Ty. You know, they all have a little love thing going. And from what I kind of gather, Horsha didn't co-sign and co-sign, but she's like, well, yeah, you know, they're really close. So, hmm. All of she come at it again. They're saying all this in front of, you know, Miss Carrie Bone. So, of course, it ain't going to stay just right there. Like I said, you know, Miss Carrie Bone, I, her only fucking storyline is this chateau that probably ain't going to be built by the end of the fucking season. Pimping out her fucking son, you know, because, you know, she can't make money on her own accord. And pretty much is carrying the drama between everybody. So, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. So before I close this out, I do want to say that um, <clears throat> I, I fellow uh, YouTuber James Colwell has a petition now to get Mary's Medicine moved back to Sundays. <clears throat> Personally, I don't care. And that's only because, you know, one less review I have to do a night, the better, because I got to wake up early to get my fucking day started. So, I mean, either way, you know, it is what it is. I prefer it to be on Fridays, me being me, but it being on Fridays could actually hurt, you know, that particular uh series and i only say that to say they are having friday's episode air right now so why not just y'all get what i'm saying so to close this shit out uh cynthia is at her place uh has her mother and sister there so i'm so i'm guessing everything is truly truly official and they're out on the docks they're rehashing shit that we've already talked about the only thing i want to mention is you will have to put some fencing around that dock. And not only they say that because if she has a party and there's not, there's like no fencing there, I mean, because the dock is very, very beautiful. You might have that one dumb son of bitches out there drunk. There's nothing to lean on, but like those like poles at the end and they just fall the fuck in. You know, I don't, don't want to see that happen to Miss Bailey. But anyway, Candy, Sheree, Miss Carrie Bone, and Horsha, they all meet up and um, pretty much. Horsha couldn't just come out and say all of the issues that she had. Sheree had to be the one to put it out there for her to even go in. And it's just like, okay, right there, signs of signs of a weak motherfucker. Because it's one of those where if you have the issue, just say what the fuck it is. So she was one upset about the block coming. And she was like, I never said that y'all fucked. I just said that, you know, y'all were a unit. But let's not pretend like y'all didn't fuck. You know. And, you know, can't even say a professional. Let's not pretend like you virgin out in these trees. I'm just like, well, well, hmm. And then the whole her airing out, um, <clears throat> come on, uh, Phaedra's, uh, business or that conversation, you know, and it's one of those where I get what she's saying, but, and I, I got it. You are defending your friend, but at the same exact time, you know, cause I mean, I've had moments where, you know, I've had, I've defended a friend. You know, like I said, long story short, you know, we was in a class. Uh, one motherfucker said he going smooth the fuck off. And I pretty much had another, like, look, bro, you ain't finna keep on <laughs> talking that smooth shit, like, on some real shit. Say one more motherfucking thing, we finna, we finna sit here and throw hands right now. Because cause I, I, I'm, I'm tired of fucking hearing this shit. Like, I'm not finna sit here and you, nah, we not finna do this. But again, that was me on my own accord. I wouldn't, and trust me when I say a battery wasn't put in my back. But I get the feeling that either a battery, like directly a battery was put in a horse's back or a Jedi mind trick battery put in the back. Because on some real shit, and I have to say, if if uh, Phaedra ain't got a problem with it, and if she's not going to address it, even though you sitting here sticking up for your friend, 
you know, it is what it is. And I understood what Candy was saying. It's just like, you, like, she in the streets. She got shit to say. She tell them motherfuckers don't work with them, which that may not be affecting my relationship, but that's affecting my money. And you know how I feel about, we know how Candy feel about her money, her food, and her family. You <laughs> fucking have one of the three. So we already know how she feels about that. And she's like, amongst other things, so she's not finna be out here running her fucking mouth and think the shit's sweet. Because, I mean, if you like, mind you, Candy wouldn't say much. She would allow her uh, her um, her staff and mother to say all this shit for her. So, I mean, right now, so technically, Candy wasn't saying shit, but again, you know, kind of still not right to have them. So pretty much having, so allowing her family and staff to talk shit about Phaedra is no different than what, you know, Horse is doing right now. So let, let me clear, clearly let me say that. But what I'm getting at is I do feel what she's saying. Like, you're not finna say, say all this shit. You're not finna be in the confessionals throwing all this subliminal ass shade or whatnot. And then think that the shit gonna be sweet over here. And again, there's only so much that one motherfucker that one motherfucker can take. Not me. I would have been that motherfucker where I would have been like, look, this is one fucking warning. I hear you talking shit. Keep and cause here's the thing, cause I done told many motherfuckers that I fuck with. You know, if our relationships go south, I ain't finna sit here and say shit. I ain't finna fucking spray you. But best believe, if you go around running your mouth, I'm coming for you. Like, for real, for real. Like, y'all think y'all done see me pop the fuck off? Of? That ain't shit. That ain't shit. When I say I can be petty and downright evil and demonic, trust me, that shit, take my word for it. I would have done that just like, I see you running your mouth, warning. You might want to stop. I'm giving you that courtesy before I see him go all the way to fuck in. But again, Candy go do what the fuck she going to do. And she got mad <clears throat> and even went at, uh, uh, what's the girl name? Um, Horse is just like, don't act like you don't know the shit that I know. So, and she's getting pissed. Like, don't sit here and question me about shit. But when I up and say it and even bring up the fact that you fucking know, don't sit here and get mad or whatnot. So, and it's got to a point where, you know, Candy just was through and fucking left. And then, you know, a whole comment about her being in the closet, you know, was mentioned this, that, and the third. So, <sighs> Lord, Lord, Lord. We'll see what happens. But, I mean, again, I think that's truly what's wrong with a lot of fucking people is that they're so concerned about other people's relationships and finances when they need to be worried about their own. Because <clears throat> all I'm going to say is this, you know, and this is going to be my closing comment. Why the fuck... You know, Horsha is so concerned about what is going on in Candy's bedroom and with her, uh, you know, sex life and everything. Let's keep, let's be real. She has two kids, is married to her uh, baby daddy, number two, and uh, they have a flirt, like they have a flourishing relationship, flourishing business ventures. Some of them have tank, but everything that she wants, Candy already has. So you got your mouth on something, but you want the same exact shit that she wants. With that being said. That's all I have. Let me know how y'all feel about this whole entire fucking episode. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys. What's the next review? If Love and Hip Hop it comes on tomorrow, I will see you for that. And like I said, there might be some other stuff coming on here with uh current lineup. I think I'm going to do Little Women of Atlanta. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. All right, y'all. Peace.